Hi guys, I'm Joan, the fashion editor of Bureau Malaysia. Today, we are here with Fern Chua of Fern to learn more about batik and how she gives it a modern take. Hi Fern, thanks Hello. for having us today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Bureau. So the brand has been around since 2013. Mm -hmm. um, how did it come about? About 10 years ago now that I actually met a car accident. So two tendons and median nerve cut on my left wrist and um, that actually really impact um, my hand movement for six months. Uh, so during that period of time, I really thought about what I wanted to do and you know, the doctor was saying that it's best that you can try to use more of your left hand, something to do with you know, to, the movements will actually help to regain back the, as much as possible. So I decided to actually pick up sewing to actually rehabilitate back my hand movement. So one thing leads to another. From there, I actually bought some um, batik materials from Central Market and I fell in love with it. I immediately made it into a sundress and I thought to myself like, hey, there's something more interesting than what it seems to be. And I decided to actually move on to that path. What would you say is the one big difference between your batik and the traditional batik? It has always been very floral-ish and very traditional in that sense that you know the colour combination is usually quite loud, I would say. Very stark. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So for my liking, of course, you know, it's it's very hard for people to be receptive towards the idea of bate. And and I had the idea of actually thinking about what I can actually evolve to. And what do you think is the biggest challenges, not only as a fashion brand but as a batik brand to um, be to thrive in Malaysia? The thing is that with batik industry is getting more and more saturated in terms of like you know florals overuse, abstracts overuse. But it only comes down to the core, how do you be different, how do you be unique. For me, it's all about creating your own patterns, down to, down to the colour combinations, to see what techniques actually works, and to be able to do something different that one, uh, another batik maker is not doing. Can you show us some of the pieces? <laughs> sure. If you were to envision a night sky and the snow is falling to the ground, it's just crazy how people think that like, oh wow, it's so simple, but it's so beautiful at the same time. It's actually one of my favourites. In a way, it's also one of a kind because the plain splatters vary yes. in different yes. pieces. Yes, and so that also takes a lot of time as well, you know, even it's just splatters, but mm -hmm. you can imagine like all of this is being done accordingly and in a sort of gradient tone way, which also takes a technique mm. to be able to get it done. And more so, it's, the, it's a hot wax process that actually we are able to create resistance towards the black dye that we are creating. So my sister now lives in France and you know I, I go there to visit her very often and during summer it's just so beautiful the color the blooms you know of the flowers and also everything just comes to life and uh, one one thing I can't deny you know when you go to the the French countryside you, you notice like all these creeps of all of these little vines Mines. along the the houses, the shops and the buildings, it's just so beautiful. So I took that as one of the inspiration behind the wilderness series. So it's just wild creeps that it's crawling, but it's just, you know, it's just some sort of like effortless mm -hmm. and very subtle sort of print that's able to actually translate that sort of message towards the collection. So for the Ginkgo series, also another of my trip to Japan, um, that's during the autumn season and I think there was there's just one part in Tokyo it's called Ichunamiki mm -hmm. one of the gardens where they have this rows and rows of ginkgo trees and which turns into this bright yellow it looks very simple but mm -hmm. you know it comes down to the fact that you know there's um, different detailing for each and every one of the piece so imagine when the wind blows and the leaves are falling off the sky Sometimes when we are doing the pieces, I thought about also the sizes So you know, certain prints gives a different effect to different silhouettes as well. So Fern, shall we move on to our next activity? Yes, I'm sure you'll be very, very excited about it. Can't yeah? wait. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So Fern, what are we doing today? Um, we are going to be doing the fan coral patterns on this piece. So as you can tell, this is actually a two layers process. So first of all, we already color a layer of yellow gold gradient tones on this fabric. And this is actually cotton, so it's actually one of our favorite fabric. 
over here, what we're going to be doing is actually the fan coral print, which we're going to be using the sponge instead of the normal chanting tool. See, it serves as a better tool as well to actually create the patterns. Yeah, using the wax on the fabric. So what you can see here is a pot of hot wax. It's actually the main way to actually do the, the pieces. So as I mentioned as well, that you know the wax actually creates resistance on the dye. So once this is dry, we are able to layer on with the wax. So the yellow part will remain, but then it will be covered with another layer of the colours. Mm. So these are some of the tools that we use to, to dip on into the wax. So we have brush here, we have sponges, and this is the most traditional tool, which is the chanting tool. So just use one point and not the whole point. Just use and then you just drag it up. See that? Mm. You have to kind of have an idea already. You've got to plan in your head where you want the lines to go to. Oh no! <laughs> it's okay, you're doing fine. Next, we'll move on to the colouring process. The so, process. yeah, we're gonna put on another layer of colours on top of the yellow. Just don't make sure that it's too wet. So, once you do that, you can actually just apply on it. So, just run through it and make sure the colour gets through. Be very, very careful. Maybe you go sideways would be better, like this. Just like that. Just comb through. 